Before I get started with the story of this year's Texas 200, I'd like to go back a couple of years ago when I started the build of the CLC Pocket Ship Candy O. I had built a couple of cedar wood strip kayaks from the plans out of the Chesapeake Lightcraft catalog. I had fun building and paddling them in the saltwater bays around my hometown of Corpus Christi. While thumbing through the pages of the CLC catalog checking out the kayak plans, I noticed the pocket chip. After a long competitive amateur cycling career and all the things that go along with that, I had lost the desire to spend long hours in the saddle. My interest in sailing was rekindled by crewing on a year-round race series on Wednesday nights in the Corpus Christi Bay with a great bunch of guys who also happen to be great sailors. When I say crewing, I mean mostly passing out beer. My previous sailing experience was sailing and racing sunfish from the time I was six years old until I was 12. So late in June of 2014, I ordered my kit from CLC to build my pocket chip. And in early August, my kit arrived. Somewhere along the way during the build, I read about the Texas 200 on the internet. I figured sailing in the Texas 200 2015 edition and my new pocket ship would be a great goal. I finished her and was in the water with a week to spare. I did about half of the 200 and called it a success. didn't realize the challenges of the Texas 200 were almost as tough as finishing the boat in time. I found a lot of changes that I needed to make for the next year to make 2016 a lot more comfortable and even more successful. Day zero, we leave from Corpus Christi, hook up the trailer, travel down 77, all the way south to Port Isabel for the start of the Texas 200. This is where we stayed for the night, Casa Rosa Inn, and the boat we kept in the slip right here just blocks from the hotel. in the room. We are in the room. After arriving at Port Isabel and putting the boat in the water and getting the boat to the slip, my brother-in-law took the truck and trailer back to Corpus Christi. Carter, Matthew, and I made our way to South Padre via a cab ride and did some shopping and had dinner. Now, now why is it you want to sit here? What? <laughs>
How do you do that? <laughs> Draw a circle. Draw a circle. Not noble. Make some more magic. Yeah. And then you stand in the middle of it and you won't attack. It has to be circle, not oval, correct? Yes. Alright, alright, all of them. There it is, fine. Hey, Carter! I need to watch where I'm steering. Here you go, five points. <laughs> well, it looked like a good idea when I bought it. This is neat. <sighs> Camp one. Hey there. Step one. And it looks like I could use a maid. It was a tough challenge getting to Camp One, but Texas 200 veterans usually don't use the words tough, hard, and certainly not can't. They use the word interesting. The camp was located on a north facing sandy beach, a few hundred yards from the Gulf of Mexico. It was six miles west off of the ICW into a three-quartering headwind down a narrow inlet. It was interesting getting there. The water stayed deep until you were a few feet from the shore. I anchored with a bow against the sand and pulled the anchor as tight as I could to minimize the boat slamming into the wall of sand every time a wave passed through. It didn't seem to help too much. The boat kept slamming against that wall every six to 10 seconds all night long. Didn't sleep much that night.
Day two started off with a trip east back down the six mile narrow inlet to Port Mansfield to drop off Carter and Matthew. From there, I was on my own. It was a long day to Haps Cut for the site of Camp 2, 33 nautical miles plus the detour to Port Mansfield to let off Carter and Matthew. The famed mud of the land cut did not disappoint. Hey, chicks pay top dollar for this stuff in New York. With a boat more solidly anchored than in Camp 1 and a short day upcoming, I slept in a little and got some much needed sleep. With my sail reef down to the size of a postage stamp, I took off from Camp 2 with a short day in store for Bird Island. 22 nautical miles. Reef early, reef often, so things don't get interesting. Camp 3 was a bit shallow and required anchoring out from shore a couple of hundred feet. I got in around 1.30 in the afternoon with a stiff breeze flowing through my cabin. I stayed very comfortable. By this time in the trip, I had become very adept at sleeping on a rocking boat. Got in a great nap while others were maintaining their boats, fishing, and relaxing. It's nice to be lazy. developed a centerboard problem. So far I've been lucky in being able to get the centerboard down when I most needed it. Not to push my luck anymore, I decided to pack it in where it all began in Corpus Christi. It was hard not completing a goal that I'd set out to accomplish and to eat boiled shrimp on Magnolia Beach. But wait till next year.
the bruises. <laughs> 